This site was initially discovered back in 1999. Uh, the fellow who owned the property at that time was selling dirt from the hillside here by the dump truck load for Phil. And apparently he uh, scooped up some mammoth bones and delivered them and the customer didn't want mammoth bones, he wanted dirt. The gentleman came back, kind of poked around to see if uh, he could find the source of those bones and he did. He found an upside down jaw, a lar very large jaw, with a couple of teeth. Our research director happened to be working at uh, uh, Central Washington University teaching uh, college kids how to dig like an archaeologist and he saw that thing well he happens to be a mammoth guy so he knew right away what this was he sent a graduate student down here and to see if he could get high school kids involved in digging this and by golly those high school kids and those people from Central came down and we found mammoth this guy was not a particularly large uh, Colombian mammoth. He stood maybe around 10, 11 feet. We think that uh, this animal was killed, drowned, by one of the Ice Age or Missoula floods. Uh, the water came from the direction of Spokane and we we have no idea where this animal was, but uh, I kind of like to tell people he was chewing grass down at Meadow Springs when he got whacked. There are grass eaters and this whole Columbia Plateau was a great grassland, so uh, as the water backed up behind Wallula Gap, I think uh, he was probably treated much like uh, an iceberg that used to make up the ice dam. He just ran aground as the flood ebbed, and there he laid, somewhat covered by mud from the next flood, and then some more by the next flood, and we think there may be six or seven layers of flood sediments to bury him. So far for big bones, we have the, the upper four legs, humeri, for both sides. We have a scapula, we have many ribs, uh, a number of vertebra, uh, of all things, some foot bones. We hoped to find the pelvis so we could determine the gender, and uh, we haven't yet. Uh, if you look just a little to the right of the bucket that Neil is dumping dirt in, uh, there's a, well, there's a rib bone right there, and there's a vertebra down there next to another rib bone. Over here somewhere in this last unit to the right is where the jaw came from. So if it was an inverted jaw, that suggests that the skull would be underneath it, and uh, we would like to find that. Well, we always have a need for donations. Uh, that's how, that's our primary uh, funding source. The $5 bill or what have you from a tour, uh, those things add up and, and that's what we rely on for things like uh, radiocarbon dating and other testing that we have to do. We use an awful lot of plastic baggies. Uh, we keep track of everything that comes out of those, those units. We wash the dirt and we have to have places to store it and we need shelving and whatnot. But another th need we have is volunteers. We are an all-volunteer organization, so uh, we're used to training folks on the site. We gladly take folks that know nothing about mammoths or digging in an archaeological style, which is what we're doing. Typically, what we will do to start with, like today, is start them on the wet screens where we wash the dirt over a very fine one millimeter screen, looking for those little bits of life. Uh, we then eventually will uh, train people uh, to support the dig workers, that is carry their buckets and provide them with the right documentation and so on. And eventually uh, some people wind up digging. And the thing is, I, this was surprising to me, there are so many spin-off related kinds of projects that people can do that you don't even have to work here at the site to contribute. So if you've got a talent or an interest in something, even though it's not even remotely related to a mammoth or the kind of science going on here, uh, talk to us. We might find something, some way for you to express yourself.